Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Klubo. Today we're going to make these fabric flowers from honey bun strips. They're fun and easy, so let's get started. Instead of a jelly roll today, we're going to work with this honey bun. This is from Moda and the name of the collection is called A Blooming Bunch by Maureen McCormick from Brady Bunch. And of course, I love the whole mod era of the 70s, so I had to get this. This, uh, these strips are an inch and a half wide. And so there's all sorts of possibilities that I can think of in my head that I'm dying to try. So let's get started. The first thing we'll make from our honey bun strip is a simple little gathered daisy. We will start with a covered button and since we're going to use the one and a half inch strip, I know that the largest button that I can use is the three quarter size. So I've cut a one and a half inch circle. This is my pattern from this print. And one thing that I learned from working with these is that it's important to have a strong contrast. This little daisy, the fabrics are so similar, it just kind of they just kind of blend into each other. And so with this one, I'm going to do a stronger contrast. Now, if you've never covered a button, it is really fun. These are the parts that come in the kit and um, then you can buy extras of these. And the directions will tell you to cut a circle of fabric that is twice the size of the button. So that's a one and a half inch circle for a three quarter inch button. And you can see I just put it right side down in this little sort of rubber mold. And then I'm sort of folding down all the ends into the center there. And then I'm going to put the back in. And you can almost press it in yourself, but they do have a little gizmo that helps you to really secure that. And I'm looking and it looks like it's in there pretty well, but um, I can feel there's like a little kind of like a clunk when it definitely gets all the way in. And then you just press it out of the form and you have an adorable little button. You can see they're fun and they're easy and if you've never done it, it's very, very satisfying. For the little ruffled petals, I have a nine inch length of honey bun strip. So I'm going to fold this in half with the wrong size together and then press it and then open it back up and seam up the ends right here. And then I'll be back. So here's my little ring and I'm going to go ahead and fold it back the, you know, the way it was pressed and then I'm going to gather this by hand along the folded edge so that this little pink edge is the outside of the flower. So I'm going to secure the knot on the inside of the seam right there and then I'm using my thimble and I'm just going to gather up this ring right on the fold in and out. There I'm back around to the seam. I'm gonna pull this up nice and tight. I have a doubled strand of quilting thread. Nice and tight. I think I'll use this side. And then I'm going to secure my thread. I'm going to use, I'm gonna make these into um, stemmed daisies. But if you wanted to, you could finish this off and make a little pin out of it or maybe attach it to a headband or um, anyway, you can use your imagination. This would be so cute on a purse or a little girl's outfit. And if you're going to do it that way, I would recommend securing the button right now. Sew it through. See, there's this little wire on the back. 
but since I'm going to make it into a uh, stemmed daisy flower, I'm going to just secure my thread right now. I'm securing it on the front side because I know that'll be covered by the button. Now I have a stem wire and some floral tape. I'm going to thread the stem wire through the loop on the button, fold this in half. It doesn't have to be exactly in half. You can actually just, uh, you know, fold it over this much and then have a longer stem if you like, but I think this will work for me. And then I'm going to put the ends of the wire through the center of the flower and pull that up. I like the way that looks. So I'm going to twist these together a little bit. It doesn't have to be super um, tight and it doesn't even really have to go all the way down. But I just want to make sure that the button is right inside the center. Can you see that little silver right there? If it's a little wobbly, that's okay because it's really the tape that helps to secure this. So I'm gonna do a wrap starting at the top and I'm gonna kind of build this up. I'm gonna spin it around a few times to build that up right next to the flower until it feels nice and secure. That feels good. And then I'll continue spinning it down the length of the wire. Since I have a little scrap, I think I'll just add a little more at the top. And now I can shape it if I like, tilt it a little bit. Here's the second one. And I'm on my way to a daisy bouquet. Okay, my second fabric flower is made in a similar way, but it has an extra layer. So we'll start, I'm going to demonstrate this again. Um, here's the little rubber form, and then the, the middle goes in the middle. The right side of the fabric is down into the form, and then I'm going to wrap all of the edge around. I very rarely get it exactly centered, but it doesn't seem to matter. Then here's the back, and I'm gonna use this little pusher. See, it's hollow here, and just kind of push it down. And I'm waiting to hear or feel that little kind of clunk. You can feel it when it settles in there. Then I pull it out and voila, looks great. In a similar way to the first project, I'm going to press this and then stitch it. And then I'll come back with that ring. And then this is nine inches and this is 22. So this is half of the length. And I'm also going to seam these ends and I'll come back with that done. So the next step is similar to our first little daisy, but I'm gonna gather up the pinked edge instead of the folded edge. I'll go all the way around, stitching through both layers, pretty close to the edge. I really want these projects to take advantage of the unique qualities of the honey bun strips. Number one, that they are an inch and a half wide and number two, that they are pinked on the edges. And also that they are all these coordinated prints, which are adorable. And I just did a search to see if these <laughs> honey bun strips, which I'd never heard of before, are really, you know, here to stay. And there certainly are plenty of them available and even this exact this exact fabric collection the blooming bunch is also readily available so this is going to be my first layer i'm going to um, tie off my thread and then i'm going to gather up this one here's the little ruffle that's completed it kind of looks like a yo-yo but 
you know, there, it's not a circle on the back. It's just a ruffle. And that'll go in the middle. And then this is the 22 inches of this pink print. And I'm going to just quickly gather up along the edge, one long edge, and form a little rosette. Once again, I'm using a double strand of quilting thread for this step. And there we go. I'm going to pull this tight and secure it on secure the thread on the back. So here are the components of my larger flower. I have the center and then this little ruffle and a larger ruffle. So I'm going to finish this in a similar fashion. I'm going to just feed the wire. This is a stem wire. This is brown, but only because I didn't have any green. Just kind of threading this all together and fold it over and back down through, through the center. Also, you know, when you're tying that off, when you're tying these pieces off on the underside, you don't need to sew back and forth and back and forth um, because that kind of interferes with the wire going through afterwards. So just secure it, you know, in the gathered parts. Okay, so now when I look at the underside here, I feel like um, this gathered part, I, I feel like that's not really that pretty. So <laughs> I looked across my table and I had these left over from the, um, the princess projects. So I thought, hmm, I wonder how this would look. And it actually looks pretty good. Um, also, I think if you go to the craft store, you can find little flower pieces, you know, for making your own flowers. And you could probably find something green that was especially designed just for something, you know, an application very similar to this. So anyway, this is how it looks now. I think that's a little bit better. And I will twist off my stem wire and cover it with floral tape. I'm just gonna, I do kind of like a build up at the start here because that, um, that tape is going to secure that, um, this uh, bead cap. And then I'll just keep twisting down the stem. I think that you might be able to use washi tape, which would be fun and add another element of color and print and a, sort of a more of a modern look, if you like. I don't know. I haven't tried it with washi tape, but it seems like it would be really fun to try. This isn't going to go all the way to the end of the wire, but that's okay. And this feels very secure. Now I entertained some other ideas because you know that I love to embellish and I thought about, you know, adding some little loops of fiber in here and I think that would be cute. Um, you could do ribbon or string or yarn. Of course I have Rick Rack on hand so I thought that would be fun and I think it would. But of course I think that might be overdoing it. And then you could also add something um, for a leaf, sort of a leaf or a bow on the stem, depending on your application, you know, what you want to use these for. And again, these will be really cute on a headband, a hat, a dress, a purse. Here we go. I have two small daisies and two large daisies. And I'm going to make a couple more and uh, call it a day. Thank you for watching my video. If you're enjoying my tutorials, please like, share, and subscribe.